designers from around the globe from around the world these designers don't all live in one place they don't all work for one company they're multiple designers artists if you will who create 3d sculpts that you can download and print on your 3d printer and then you can make beautiful miniatures and you can display them dare i even say play with them like and just have a great time so here we go. This is the first one. Uh, the world is flat, sus. Agreed. <laughs> Agreed, yes. We obviously aren't going to Australia because uh, there's no designers there because Australia is fake. And the pigeons are all robots. So that's something to be really uh, cautious of. Okay, so the first designer we're going to look at today is the Lord of the Print. Uh, a little bit of a rip on the Lord of the Rings. Uh, but that's okay. That makes sense. Uh, Australia and Finland are fake. Changed my mind. <laughs> I don't think I don't think isn't Finland aggressively um uh like asking for immigration at the minute I think so not really the point of the start of this video uh if you watch this on YouTube okay um <laughs> right okay so the first one I mean obviously as you can see it looks like it's an elfin an elfin release elfin elven elfin is different um I think elfin is what Femboys are. They're elfin. I'm not really certain though. Um, uh, Finland, come live in our country. Yeah. So look, there's a bunch of elves and they look pretty good actually. They don't have like necessarily tons of texture. Like the scale mail's nice. Uh, I like the arm pieces. They've definitely got tone on the rest of the weapon, but they don't have like. What, I'll show you some examples of like really good texture later. But I don't think these are bad. Uh, their last release was really good. They did a bunch of chaos stuff, which was very fun. And I think these are okay. I think maybe they're presented not the best what does everyone else think in the chat i am doing this live with the twitch chat by the way which i do every day monday through to friday unless i take a day off unless i take a day off and that's it so here we go uh we've got some spears i think these are a little bit uninspiring as in the unit weapons uh like the the unit options normally i'm not too big a fan of like the large pieces from this designer and i much prefer the the small, the actual units. I'm, I've always been a dude's dude. Ed Nutman, thanks for resubscribing to Twitch. Really appreciate you. Um, I've always been like a, a dude who do, who prefers a good dude. But um, I do like the big sculpts on this one. So as you can see, uh, we've got an elf riding a large mammal. Uh, dinosaur, uh, vampire, vargulf. It's very cool. It's got like a, a quadruple tail. Um Rob pronounced it Elvin. <laughs> uh, vanilla AF. Jump ahead to the Gonzo stuff. Okay, yeah, it's a little vanilla. It's a little vanilla. So, obviously, I've been doing the show now for... What have we been doing the show, chat? Like a year? Maybe a year and a half? Maybe two years. So, we've been doing the show for a while where we look at the sculpts every month. And it's super fun. But, sure, we've seen Elven sculpts before. And this is, like, quite a good one. It looks quite nice. Like, I don't... Like, it's a pretty good quality. Uh, but yeah, I think uh, Pershaw in the chat is is correct. It's a bit vanilla. I mean, I love the shield. The shield is good. It really is. Uh, but I think it lacks character. Uh, is that fair to say? Like it's all really good. But they look they look like NPCs. Like they look like you would go into like Stormwind or something. Stormwind. God, I miss playing World of Warcraft. Remember when you were like up late at night, you had a pizza, you had a big drink in and you and your guild were about to raid. That was a good time. That was a really good time. Same time when you were all out playing Pokemon Go for that two weeks. Great time. Same time when it was really acceptable to watch a kid like flip a bottle of water and then dab. And that was pretty much the highest achievement a human could achieve in the human race at that point. Just good times in the human race. Uh, however, as you can see here, um, I think they're a bit they're a bit NPC, right? Do you not think? Um, I don't remember those times I wasn't a WoW world. Shall we form a WoW guild? Rob is raid leader. <laughs> Aggressive David. Okay, uh, I mean this is obviously a, a great piece. So this is uh, a griffin, um, and there's a griffin with a rider as well. I think that's a great piece, really well done. I think the presentation is really good. I sometimes look at these miniatures and wish I was a painter of some note because I think maybe I'd be able to like look at these de these designs with a little bit more like I guess it's like like I like really good painters, really good painters. I guess they look at this stuff and it's like a canvas for them. 
instead like instead of saying how am I going to paint that up, they look at it and they think like they start adding their 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 style on top of it, if that makes sense. But that's never really been something I've been able to do because it's not really where my mind is. I just go yo cool mini, cool mini yo. Um, Rob just looks at the design for texture to dry brush. That is absolutely true. Pete's right. Those tails do look like they would snap off. So I agree with that massively. Uh, some of these designs would be very fragile if it's 3D printed. Uh, <laughs> that was fun. Don't make jokes at my expense of the chat. Um, I think the Griffin on uh, some pretty standard fantasy tropes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. So L plus ratio plus you fell off to Lord of the Print this week. Uh, that's fine. Uh, okay, let's go to the Creepers. So this isn't the full release yet for Beast Area Miniatures. This is actually just their preview. We're a little bit early on the 5th of January uh, with the preview. Uh, so we're just going to see some of the preview stuff. And this really goes from... Uh, this is like fantasy horror. Beast Area Miniatures does fantasy horror is the kind of way I would personally describe it. Uh, as you can see here, there's some sort of... These aren't the final sculpts as well. So we, we've seen the final product release to some uh, some other stuff. So to it's like kind of works in progress but it definitely looks like a ghoul king on some sort of monster and i'm keeping my eyes on this because we know there's new flesh eater courts and these are so up my street i love everything about this like dave says in the chat quite rightly he's outed me i love stuff that i can dry brush because i'm never going to paint it properly i'm just going to slap chop it so as you can see bestarium's got all of this texture to slap chop over that which i think is good uh the name of this uh designer is called best area miniatures let me just grab the link for you guys in the chat and if you're watching back as a youtube video there'll be like links down below to all the different designers um but if you do end up subscribing or buying something from them please do leave them a note and say honest wargamer sent me he does a review show every month um because it's nice it's nice i like i, I really like these are all patreons i subscribe to by the way uh these are not patreons that um uh like th they haven't paid me i don't like I'm a terrible businessman. I'm just I've decided that in like last year. I I, I support these artists because I think their art is great. Versus cutting a deal with them uh, to promote their stuff. Um, uh, I've been tempted to sign up to them. Their stuff is very nice. Their stuff is very nice. Yeah. Um, in my opinion, I don't get why so many models are over engineered. Moon Tyranid, do you mean that there's lots of texture? That's a great point, and let's have a conversation about that, because I'd like to. And I don't mean this as a critical piece, because I think... Uh, I was this, Someone explained this to me recently. So, uh, hold on. This has gone really badly. My keyboard's working super weird at the minute, and I don't know why. Oh, my God. Let's try and fix this. One, one second, chat. Um... That's better. Right, so uh, here's my example. Um, let's go look at some what happened to the Rangers game. True. Let me email them and find out. Right, so uh, here we go. So if we look at... Okay, there's some really good stuff in there to, to immediately show. So if we look at the Trogoths, um, where were they? Well, we need to look at modern sculpts, so let's not be unfair to GW in this regard. Let's look at some modern sculpts versus some of their older sculpts. So uh, I was going to use the Trogos as an example, and not intended to be like a like a poor example. I'm not trying to. Uh, actually, the dwarfs are pretty good. They're pretty good um, as a good example, I think, uh, for the engineering. Uh, similarly, the Zinch stuff is all new. <laughs> I'm trying to think something that's like more animalistic, that is more like representative of um, of what they do. I guess. The Daughters of Cain stuff is pretty new as well. So if you look at the models on these, like these are fairly over-engineered for like how little they are. Like the engineering on them is great. And what we mean by that is there's not a lot of like negative space. So that would be on this shoulder pad, here on this piece of armor. The shields have got like rivets and they've also got designs in them. The dwarves are like very highly engineered in my opinion. I think they look really good. Um, but like, uh, so there's some good example there. And then... Uh, on the Daughters of Cain models, if we go through, so like they they've got a little less, uh, they've got a lot of detail, but like not quite as not quite as much texture. I think Nurgle is a good example. We probably should have looked at as a comparison, but ultimately um, the negative space that they leave lets you paint a bunch of stuff in there. 
Um, flies, the most recent sculpt, yeah. Uh, I love some simple minis. The victorious historical plastics are a joy to paint compared to the trillion greeble style of Games Workshop. Should have another show where you're a really talented painter. Guests come in and chat about minis with you. I have a suggestion for who you could get as a guest. <laughs> I'm sure I could, but anyone who works for any large company is normally has to get that okayed by said large company. Um, uh, the evolution of Space Marines uh, would be case in point. Pershaw's right. Um, uh, it's video uh, negative space, aka gaps. Yeah, aka just fucking flat spaces, basically. Um, I like the engineering on these because sometimes you don't get that from Games Workshop. They end up with giving you a lot of negative space, specifically because they like painters. They'd like you to paint in the 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 detail in some ways. Obviously, a lot of modern sculpts have got a bunch of different texture um, as well. But here, the designers are just designing something for you to paint. I, I like this. Like, I like the over engineering. Like, I, I understand that some like like Moon says that there's it's too engineered. But if, like, you can see all the opportunity here. There's, like, a crystal, so you could do, like, a crystal paint job. There's wood, skin, cloth, uh, distorted skin, magic, and then claws and weapons. It's a lot of textures to paint. It makes a lot of sense. Morning, Russ. What the fuck is these big words and complex concepts? Texture, negative space. This used to be a show and be a show and a big show. <laughs> a shake and bake show. Yeah. You can see the Dark Souls inspiration from Ma, which is really good. You can. And again, these just works in progress. This is probably one of my favorite designers. Look, he's left you a lot of negative space on the skin here if you want to do, like, blending or, like, you want to, like, build up the highlights on that. Like, you can um, if you wanted to. But similarly, like, that's going to work really well with, like, washes and and <laughs> and sparkling undercoating, if that's what you're interested in. And the designs are great. I can't wait to see them finished. Probably one of my favorite designers. Like, they're up there. I mean, that's just batshit, right? Um, I was even keeping from us, but he's actually sponsored by the Collins Dictionary and gets paid per fancy word he drops in. <laughs> Didn't even use any fancy words. Oh God. Anyway, here we go. Um, these look great, and uh, looks like this. We know Flesh Eater Courts are getting a redesign in the summer. Uh, so this could be this could be our this could be our redesign. Oh my God. You have to remember this guy is also an absolute creeper. Like he puts some absolutely awful stuff out to print. Like, look at that. That is horrible. Um, I l always love the designs for this dude. Me too, Pershaw. I like the different... I, I, what I love is the flavor between them. Like, we definitely Lord of Print has got a style, right? That we've, like, started to understand. Like, it's it's very... Like, some of the designs have been fantastic. Uh, but Best Arium have also got a very specific aesthetic. Uh, and that is Horror Creep Show, which we hate. Yeah, it's very good. It's very, very good. There you go. You can see that 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 dragon. And I printed some stuff from Best Arium. Prints out really nice. Looks like it looks like it does in the files. Really quality. All right. Next up, uh, we've got. Look at these bad boys. We've got some Skelly Bob. So this is STL miniatures. They tend to do like D and D style miniatures. They're a little bit more Warcrafty. Uh, they're a little bit more D and D. I think if you were to buy an STL subscription, when you do subscribe to a Patreon, you end up getting. Uh, a discount code for all of their previous products, which are normally hosted either on their own website or hosted on My Mini Factory. So then you can go back to My Mini Factory, buy them all at a discount. If you were to do that with STL Miniatures and get yourself a 3D printer, I think you could play D&D forever with 3D printed minis. Millions of them at this stage, all with really cool stuff. Uh, so here's some undead things, some cool little dudes. And you can stick this into a, a wargaming army. And there's also, as you can see, some sort of necromancer, like apothecary stall. Again, just the best, the best place for finding files for wanting to do D and D. All sorts of shenanigans here. Um, I used to be one of the best Aaron bears for Nurgle Beast, my carnival Nurgle army. Really good sculpt, really good. Yeah. Um, Theater of the mind for D and D. I die on this hill. I've never been to their Patreon, so apologize about that. This guy's favorite film is Human Centipede. Well, the last guy, the last guy's favorite film is definitely Human Centipede. He has it in the background while he's sculpting. These look like great skeletons. I think STL Miniatures have been doing phenomenal work. They just don't do armies. They don't do whole armies, but they do really, really evocative, uh, loads of texture, uh, loads of fun little details. Um, like I like these coin bags that have like, uh, like been ripped open, so they've got no money left. That's really fun. 
Uh, they do stand a bit funny. They've got great designs for doing characters. Like, look at this. You've got kind of an apothecary lady doing a magic out of a pot. That's really fun. That's super fun. She's got a little spatula. That's cool. Then you've got me. <laughs> me trying to work out how to use YouTube algorithms. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and, then, and then you've got the Twitch chat. Uh, this is them stirring the pot. This is the Twitch chat just stirring the pot about whatever they want to stir the pot about. Uh, this to tortoise, just FYI, is wearing clothes. He's got trousers and he's got a little jumper on. It's a tortoise in clothes. Tell me that that's not just a fantastic, fantastic sculpt in every way. Uh, would like the old dude has a lot of character. Yeah, they, they, they. I think they make some of the most characterful minis. I really do. Like they've got just a bunch of like energy in their minis. And then there's just like a chest of drawers, a table, a bookcase, all this stuff. I mean. The Gibbo is holding a bottle. Yes, that's true. Uh, and, but look at this. Like, all these things will be individual things you can uh, print. So you've got a basket with a angry, alive pumpkin, I think. And then you've got, uh, like, a bunch of kind of, like, alive characters in little pots. Um, uh, if we can do start collecting the style box for the print minis as a price run, which is as licensed to sell certain stuff commercially. Hey, that's a cool idea. I love that, Russ. Hey, Russ, also, you're running uh, not even GT, uh, AOS. Do you need Objective Zone to cover it? Question mark, force, force slash message, message me. Uh, anyway, uh, there we go. Cool stuff, fun stuff, love that stuff. Love it, let's go. Uh, so that's STL minis. Gamak are just straight rip-off merchants. They're like, here's the light of Altharian. Uh, these are some elven archers. This is just Lumineth Realm Lords. Uh, Lumineth Realm Lords. They just, they just rip off merchants. So this month they're doing Luminous Realm Lords. So there you go. That's what they're doing. Clay Beast Creation, huge fan of those on the show. Um, uh, and Clay Beast, is, Clay Beast definitely produces whole army ranges. Maybe not in a single month if you subscribe. But over the course of a whole couple of months, you can build a whole army out of their stuff. I built a Zinch army and a Seraphon army out of their designs. Absolutely wonderful stuff. Uh, here you can see they're going for some like bone dudes. So... I feel like these are going to be uh, your OCR Bone Reaper types, or you can use these as sort of like Grave Lords, one of those two. Um, so here you can see, like, they've got big, probably, probably a sort of like Grave Lords. Uh, so vampires, necromancy, uh, dudes from the dead. Yeah, so these are Grave Guard with two handed weapons. And look how awesome they are. Like, their weapons are made of, like, bone meal. They've got, like, the vertebrae on the spine. Um, absolutely kick the crap out of current grave guard in my personal opinion um link for those lrl rob yeah no problem bud uh there you go i'll put it in the chat for you uh it's gamak uh is who do their stuff um not a fan of gamak i am a fan of gamak like don't get me wrong like like okay the, the, these are two perfect examples so like we know, like, these are meant to be Sentinels. Uh, not Sentinels, Wardens for Lumina Throne Lords, right? And they're good designs. Like, they really are. Like, they, they have good designs. I printed out an entire um, Stormcast Dragon army from their Stormcast Dragon range. I'm not against what they do, but some of what they do is... So, I mean, okay, this is what they're currently doing for 40k. Like, you know, I'm not against what they do. I just don't think that necessarily, like, I think that they're, what's the best version? They're, they're always the Wish.com version of the Warhammer miniature. And they do all of it, right? They'll do you, they do you every bit. If you subscribe to Gamak, you would 100% be able to print 3D printed versions of every special character and everything like that from, uh, from Gamak. Uh, and that's great. It's great that there's an option out there for people. I just feel like, you know, like, it's copying my homework but changed my name at the top versus Clayby's Creation, who's doing Graveguard, but instead of doing, they look a lot like the actual Graveguard sculpts, you and I, like, this is completely new. Like, I haven't seen this. I haven't seen those those big bone weapons, the very powerful skull pieces, uh, like, sorry, chest pieces. I think they look different. Like, they, they do their own version of it versus the knockoff version of it. That's what I'm trying to get at. I'm not 
criticizing them. I'm saying that they do look good, but I feel like there's there's inspired by and there's knockoffs and there's a there's a difference. I feel Gamak sits in knockoffs and I feel Clay, Be- Clay Beast feels like it's inspired by. I don't know if everyone agrees, but that's kind of where I'm at. Okay. So we got a bunch of shields, uh some weapons, all sorts of good stuff. Uh here you can see uh look at that. Uh uh, some centaur guys. I don't even know what these would be. I guess these would be like black knights. And again, black knights uh, from Games Workshop are skeleton horsemen ridden by skeleton warriors. Here instead, they've done skeleton um, like centaurs for doing black knights, right? Um, oh man, completely missed the start of the show. No problem, Shadow Sub, and hello in the chat. So like, look, like again, you could use those as black knights, and that's super cool and weirdly creepy weirdly creepy i think um weirdly creepy very cool uh and then uh oh i love love the white king so it's going to be like the white king on foot uh and then that's the white king at the top on a steed on skeletal steed both of which are really useful in a slave uh, sorry in a sob like grave lord's army um either of those two what uh make grave guard battle line in an army which is really sweet but i would definitely say that they're like there's so much texture on them they're super fun. The weapons are really cool. I really like those. Yeah, love the steed. Yeah, the steed's really awesome. Like, it's like, is it uh, like a bull? I think it's a skeleton bull as opposed to a skeletal horse, which I think is very clever. Uh, cheeky leads to Cavalos, perhaps. Yeah, you could also. Owen's absolutely right. You could also use. Um, you also, I guess it's like a dual kit, right? You could put the because more tech guard are on twenty five mil. No, they can't be on thirty two mil. You could put these guys that we're looking at here with shields, um, banner, weapons, and all of that. They could easily be either Mortec Guard or you could use them as Skeleton Warriors if you wanted to. Or Grave Guard with shields, which you would never build. So, like, there's, like, triple use out of, like, this single this single sculpt, which is pretty fun. And seeing as you're doing the Death Army, like, you might want to ally stuff in. Age of Sigmar is a bit interesting for people who don't know. In Age of Sigmar, you've got your core army, but you can sometimes ally stuff in from your Grand Alliance. Obviously, death is a Grand Alliance. So you might want to just do all of the basing for all of one Grand Alliance army as roughly the same. As an example, all my Chaos stuff is on, like, fire magma bases. So if I ever bring an ally in, I'm like, cool, I don't have to do a different base because normally an event would say that you need matching bases, right? Um, uh, they would be sweet on 28 mil, but they're currently on 25 uh, okay, they're on 25 mil. All right, great. So then, I mean, this is like an incredible sculpt. Genuinely might go on my printer soon as Graveguard slash. Like, you could paint this up and I've got four different units out of it every time, which you, which wouldn't be confusing. Similar, these guys could be Black Knights or they could be Death Riders for um, OCR Bone Reapers. That's a great shout. I love that. I absolutely love that they could be two things at once. And then that guy at the back could be a Liege Cavalos, although he is on a different base size to a White King, and then White King on foot. Um, weight events require matching bases. Um, uh, I think it's generally considered to have your army be cohesive. Like, it's generally... It's mainly to stop people borrowing, like, three or four different armies and st- sticking it together. I think cohesive basing is genuinely really good, as a rule. I think it makes an army look like an army. Um, because then, like, I mean, bro, just take all of your minis, not not your minis, like, buy a bunch of eBay stuff, and then just stick them on, just paint some bases and stick it all on matching bases. Um, I think that seems fine, in my personal opinion. Uh, <laughs> and then we've got uh, what looks like a Vargulf, uh, contemplating the mystery of life. Um, hello, chat. Hey, Rob. I hope everyone's okay. What up? Any advice not taking continual losses to heart when playing with toy soldiers? Uh, yeah, like, um, continual losses, uh, just count every victory as a win when you do get them, um, taking losses, like, you just, like, don't play with rubbish armies, that helps, uh, like, if you're playing with a rubbish army, um, and then try and identify what you're doing wrong, go through that process, write down what you need to do, add more stuff, like, like, write down what you did, ask your opponent what you think you could have done better, Learn from those experiences. Put them into practice next time. Like it's just it's just iterative. It's just like do learn play. Um, uh, hello, Lioness Angel. Um, and also, don't make reason uh, winning the only reason you enjoy playing. That's also super fair. Yeah. 
That's also super fair. Uh, there is... Oh, boy. Look at that guy. Uh, he's cool. He's just like a big um, Vargulf style character. Okay, I think that's a pretty sweet release from Clayby's uh, miniatures. I think he's kicked off 2023 in a very big way. Um, like, I think that's really fun. I think that that is an amazing value for money release. You are very potentially building a unit or a couple of units out of that which could be represented as several different units in game. That's huge, in my personal opinion. Um, I love that. Well done to Clayby's Creations there. Uh, okay, on to the big dog. Archvillain Games. Okay, big dog, let's go. So Archvillain uh, is, has done another Tome of Demons. So this is Tome of Demons 3. So this is a bunch of demonic uh, monsters. This looks like an ape demon. Uh, it is a great set, I agree. There's also a sculpt. Uh, and then you've got a bunch of... Uh, isn't there like a monkey demon in, in Chinese for, like uh, like mythology? I'm sure there is. I think they get riffing off that, right? Um, um, rest. It just knocks my confidence when I lose games. It makes me feel like I should stop playing. You shouldn't stop playing. You should never stop playing. We all lose. The best players in the world lose. I don't think there's anyone with a 100% win rate. Like, everyone loses. Okay? That's something really important to remember. We all lose at the games. Uh, and we all will get better over time. That's also the thing that you need to remember. Like, the people that do very, 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 very well are obsessive compulsives. Like, almost all the time. Almost every time, in fact. Like, so if you're just roughly, if you're just roughly playing a game, Seagull is a good example from Persia. It's like Seagull doesn't lose. The man plays five or six games of Warhammer 40k a week and several tournaments a year. There's just absolutely... Uh, there's absolutely no way you put that amount of time and effort in. Okay. Nor does anyone else. Um, but the very best way to do better is to play as much as you can and learn and do better. Like, that's it. Um, uh, uh, like, that's it. But, like, it's like any like, it's like any sport. Like, every, every, every person, you, like, go to the man on the street and you say, hey, could you return a serve from... Serena Williams and they say yes and then like 90% like uh, like 90% of them or 100% of them say yes and like like 95% of them can't actually return the serve which is pretty funny when you put them in against them like like you, you need to really understand how much work put is put in by the people who play a lot and play really well those people are dedicated like and there is absolutely value in playing that much and being that dedicated like there is some people say that you're a tryhard. Those people are morons. Some people will say, uh, uh, some people will say that uh, like you'll win at all cost players. Those people are jaded, ill, and not very well. They're unable to understand that other people have different value in life than what they have. Uh, some people are jealous of people that play that much. Uh, none of those, none of those negative attitudes towards people who play a lot and do well at playing a lot are valuable and also okay. Because they, those people then don't turn around and say, hey, I can't believe that you're just hanging out with your friends and you don't care who wins. It's a ridiculous statement, right? So, um, yeah, my favorite crazy survey is the number of Americans that think they can fight a bear. There you go, right? Um, uh, like, so just um, uh, don't be... Uh, yeah, d don't be too results focused. Focus on decisions you made in the game. That's super true. Like, write stuff down. Like, this is turned into a whole section that should be clipped out of the video, but I'm not going to do it. <laughs> Just write stuff down. Um, uh, like, that's that's your best way. You have to be analytical of your work. That's super true. Something I haven't done with, with the content I make. I haven't been analytical of the work I've made for years. And because of that, I really, really don't like it. So now I'm going to be more analytical, analytical of the work I do, and hopefully I'll do better at the work I do. That's something we've all got to do, right? No, don't be, don't apologise. I don't give a shit, really. Like, like the stream is because it's a stream of consciousness, right? Uh, not because like this isn't. This is. A, it's funny while this guy's been in the corner the whole time. This weird demon ape guy. <laughs> um, you find a lot of enjoyment uh, out of lost games. Try to optimize differential. Uh, some of my favorite games I've lost. Uh, so my most recent tournament, I went three two, which is which is pretty rubbish for me, and I was pretty down on myself. But I had to like be really honest, and I had to be like, I don't think my army could have done anything in the two matchups I lost. So instead, 
of like beating up on myself and saying it's my fault, I've said to myself like, look, Rob, like you want to play Zinch, like you think you're clever and you can play it really well, but you've stood across from the table and two armies have just kicked your ass and you could do very little to stop them kicking your ass. Like, um, so I've had to be really upfront about that because the, the pride part of me tells me that I can keep playing that army and I can do really well with it. Like, and it's just bullshit. I just can't, like, I just, I just can't push, I just can't push an army that doesn't have the juice forward. So I've just, I've just got to re relook at what I want to play. So you have to sometimes be like, I have to be like, I'm not as clever as I thought I was because I can't, I can't play rings around like iron jaws. They're just going to run at me and beat me the fuck up. So, um, uh, I run through my games. I think I could have done differently or what I lacked and then try and do that. Yeah. The story down here about a guy who severely injured himself at a science museum trying to show he could outrun the Olympic women's record. <laughs> uh, and also tournaments of making friends. So do that also. Like, uh, Rob, what's your favorite 3D printable range? What's my favorite 3D printable range? It's a great question. Um, answer that at the end. How's that sound? I'll answer that at the end. That's a good one. Thanks for subscribing. Okay, let's keep going with this. Uh, like, so we've got a bunch of monkey demons. Sure. Demons that are monkeys. Um, they're cute. They're furry. Uh, they're weird. Not sure about this guy. This is weird. Like, I don't know what... Is this... I don't know what the influence is from this is. I'm getting kind of like Lost Kingdom sort of vibes where, you know, you're deep in a, a jungle and like... You know, and the jungles come to life. Uh, 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 like, yeah, something like that. And then this thing, which I do not know. what. Yeah, I think this is definitely like Lost Jungle kind of like, um, n n yeah, jungle vibes. But just twisted with demon stuff. That seems fair. Um, I don't know how I feel about the fur texture. Yeah, sometimes it looks awkward. That's because it's all done in a matte color. Because it, obviously it's been 3D like painted, but I think if you were to like start doing a bunch of like coloring on the the feathers and the fur, they would differentiate from each other quite significantly, and they would look quite good. Um, uh, so like, yeah, it's pretty rough. Um, possessed battle chicken, yeah, like that is. Look at that, that is nightmarish stuff. Uh, I quite like the tentacles as like a crotch cape, yeah. That's pretty good. A crotch cape. Yeah, so there's a bunch of these. Um, and then he also does... I mean, this was casting fireballs. That's amazing. That's actually amazing. That is awesome. It's got big wings. Bro, look at that. That is good. Um, could be a Kairos. Sure. Could be like a Mutant Vortex Beast as well. That would be a fun thing to maybe put it as. Um... That's weird. Like that's, I think that's genuinely fantastic. Okay, so, um, look at that bad boy. Look at our bad boy. This is great. So yeah, this is definitely. So I was, I was wondering if I was being like, if I was attaching it, but it's definitely got kind of like Aztec Incan vibes in it as well. Like that's definitely, uh, this is definitely part of it, part of the design process. Sure, like looking at that, that's quite obvious, right? Um. The tentacles are so random on this lad. I think the thing is, is like, is it looks like something that makes sense to us and then it's corrupted and that kind of feels like a perfect demonic representation. You just take a thing you would design anyway and then you say, cool, now demons have destroyed it. It's kind of like, uh, like, is the way they've worked forward. That looks great. Those dual blades look awesome. Huge fan. Uh, getting dragged into meetings as soon as STLs will get reviewed. Let's see. Wolf and Studios, look after yourself. Wow. This looks amazing. Absolute. That's a Demon Prince. Right? That is awesome. Imagine doing that. That would be great. Big uh, Aztec cleaver. Great bone face. And then just the, like, uh, it is Ziggy. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, the tentacles are great as a way to demonstrate motion. That's true. They are. That's a good point. Uh, 
I feel like the old days of resin proxies are over. I bought some dwarfs from Screeball and ditched them in favour of Highland Miniature Sculpts. Just spent £150 on a Creature Caster Sculpt, and honestly, these look just as good. The, the, the days of like traditional manufacturing for 3D for, for minis is over. 100%. Um, like, this is like current generation technology that's built these designs, and someone who's been using current generation technology. Um, I feel like they got halfway through Elizabeth and sculpt and hard pivoted. It's quite interesting. Um, uh, like, th it's just not like 150 pounds that you would spend on a creature caster mini, which is a great mini. Don't get me wrong. Uh, like, has to support an entire infrastructure which we no longer have to pay for: shipping, production, storage, advertising. Like, you can pay the designer, have the printer yourself, um, or get someone on Etsy to do it for you. And when it's Etsy, it's probably about the same price as buying something commercially. But you can skip that step now as a consumer, and it's just great. Like, really good. I guess it's like the same people as make beer, though, right? There's, you can make beer at home and wine, but you're always going to go out and buy beer. I'm sure. Um, yes, horses, what up? Uh, these are phenomenal. Look at these. I would want to do something with this sculpt with the big blades, this sculpt with the, the giant kind of cleaver and the tentacles, this guy... Um, with the big hammer and mallet, and then this guy with the kind of like back hammer thing. I would like to do something with those. I don't know what I would use them as. They're probably too big for chosen, but that would be awesome. It would be quite fun to maybe use them as the the bulls from Chaos. Uh, what are they called the Theridins from uh, Safe to Darkness. That'd be quite fun. Um, I wish things like Slangor were maybe a light, slightly better because maybe you could use those as Slangor or something like that. Um, a difference uh, for a single beer. That's true, Gangs Paradise. Does the comp comparison make 30 show like campaign for real little newsletter? <laughs> Would you have ever never consider printing and selling these sets, Rob, or individual models? I would, JP, um, but I think that's an entire business for someone to do. Is set up as like a 3D printer person, um, and then and then you know you you still have to do the thing where you have to go out there and advertise and sell and you know do all that work. I think like and people do this sort of stuff on Etsy, um, and I don't necessarily want to be like a, a 3D manufacturer and seller. It's not what I want to do as a job. But I think there's definitely someone who could do that as a job and would be very viable. Uh, I think that I think that's definitely true of terrain, and I've said this time and time again. Um, but when you do come to the TSN Arena, like I, I have a couple of merchant licenses for miniatures such as these, for example, and then I do sell them like in physical copies. Um, but like the the major problem is showing people what you have available, I guess, um, because the three D designers drop like nine hundred sculpts, no, not that two hundred sculpts a month. It's insane. Um, how are non-Games Workshop events with 3D proxies these days? They're pretty good, unless Games Workshop's co-opted them, like CanCon or LVO. Um, so you're not allowed 3D sculpts at either of those two events, which is pretty rough. Um, but yeah, like generally okay. And also, why would you turn this away? Is the real question. Wags McPhail, thanks for resubscribing. No, f subscribing for the first time. <gasps> That's huge. That's huge. That's a new fan in the chat. I absolutely love that. Let's go. That means you think that the work I do is valuable enough to play, pay me a tiny amount of money. Thanks, bloody. That's, I mean, that feels great. Thanks, bud. I really appreciate that. Uh, also, Archvillain also do these kind of like um, uh, relics that you can print. So that'll print probably the size of a normal dagger. That'll be the size of it. And then you can paint it up. Great as a trophy. Great as a prize. Just awesome stuff. Uh, imagine if you sold terrain to a schlubs in the chat. <laughs> Um, uh, here we go and then there's a bunch of like demonic stuff like so this is RPG stuff that they have which is great looking stuff oh that's amazing amazing stuff there it's so bizarre that CanCon has done that considering Australia has been screwed by years for Games Workshop <sighs> Games Workshop is a, a massive company and when they f uh, but they've also been incredibly ignorant of the community so there's a lot of these community leaders who are fanboys, like, in a lot of ways. This isn't me talking about CanCon exclusively um, or specifically. But there's been a huge, huge 
uh, pushed by Games Workshop to actually reach out to these people. And most of these people have run events for a long time just off their own back. And so having this big multinational company come in and be like, do you want like five quids worth of vouchers? And they've been like, yes, because they're such a cheap, such a terrible company in the way that they deal with their customer base that when they, like they're, they're like the abusive boyfriend, right? Like they give you a crumb of good feelings and then you just lap it up like you just lap it up. Right. Uh, because they're just so mean to you all the time, the rest of the time. Um, Holy shit, that's amazing. Holy, that is incredible stuff. That is an amazing sculpt. Look at that. Uh, yeah, Senpai noticed them, yeah. Uh, honestly, we'll sell you fuckers uh, out for a pot of Noel oil. <laughs> so funny i will sell you all out for a pot of known oil <laughs> come at me uh anyway that's an amazing sculpt i love that uh wow wow it's like cthulhu amazon it's like take the take the amazon and cthulhu and stick it together right or cthulhu aztec right that's nuts bro there's loads of them shut up you can make a unit of these. Oh, that is phenomenal stuff. Look at that. Like, wow. That is insane. Okay, incredible stuff from Archvillain there. Like, especially the sort of smaller stuff. Uh, uh, being bad as they were, congrats on being not shit as you could be. Horses, you're right, 100%. Uh, right, okay, it's time to go into the, like, what as per, what did Pershaw say? The, the absolutely unhinged stuff. We're going to go to Dragon Trapper's Lodge. Okay. <laughs> Super unhinged. Get ready. Get ready to be unhinged and have fun. Okay, all right. So this is a little farmhouse, a scarecrow, and all oh, me cabbages, me lord. Oh, no, don't be trampling on me cabbages. There's a little cabbage patch, <laughs> and there's a giant pig with a lodge on top of its back. So that'll be huge. That will be absolutely massive, that sculpt, because like everything at the top will be designed for like 28 mil characters. So that'll be like, that'll be huge. That'll be like an Imperial knight size vehicle, right? Uh, not the pig, guys. Uh, right, next one. Is that a wizard on top of... A dragon that's also a cockerel and a pig with the feet of a horse is Archeon. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. Let's do Archeon. Chat. Come on. Let's. This is Archeon. Perfect. Yeah. This is perfect. This is <laughs> Chaos Source for Lord of This is Archeon. This is what this is. Um, okay. There it is. There's the on foot. Uh, <laughs> uh, por Porkion. <laughs> it's awesome. Uh, right then. Okay, now this is this is obviously this is obviously eleven out of ten behavior. These are grubs. Are they grubs? Little fellas, little um, mandrakes. I guess is what you would call them. Shrubberies that have come to life. They look like there's a big guy and a bunch of little guys. Root veg. Tur Chat their turnips. Oh my god, whimsy. Correct. We have got a lot of whimsy available in this set of sculpts. If you didn't watch the previous show the other day, we talked about there was not, not, not enough whimsy in the world anymore. We need a bit more whimsy. This is a turnip army. That is correct. God damn these electric turnips. <laughs> turnip for what? Oh god. What are they? They're pigs. With tiny wings. <laughs> Flying pigs. Uh, <laughs> the whimsy. Dragon tappers is what we need sometimes. Like, whenever the horse is going, my new sister's a battle. <laughs> okay, good. Uh, Activate uh, Matt Berry voice. Turnips. This is the shit I need to get. This is this is it. Pershaw's on this. 
What are they? Are they cockerel riding? Hello. Hello. They're cockerels and they're knights atop croc cockerels. One of them is a rabbit. They're rabbits. They're rabbit knights atop cockerel mounts. There's a lot of whimsy available right now. Maybe too much whimsy. Uh, so then... What the... Is it a cow? Because <laughs> they're artists. They're cow warriors. <laughs> Fucking helmets. Archie with his Varigard. This is this this is Dragon Tapper's Lodge. This is them every month. Looks like these would work great for Chaos No by Feastmasters. That's a great shout, JP. That's true. Uh they're fun lads. Are they just chucking shit in AI art and designer models from them? No, they do this every month. This has been every release they've ever done. Like they are unhinged, which is why I subscribe to them. Yeah, look at that. Just a bunch of rabbit warriors. One's playing a flute. <laughs> <laughs> then we got our rabbit infantry. Okay, so these are our ra these are our rabbit special characters, right? We can build a Lumineth army out of this, right? Let's talk about this. What have we got? We've got, um, oh my god, this is a Lumineth army. These are all the special characters, right? Those are um, our Stone Guard. These are our Dawn Riders slash uh, the um, the other guys. They're not anything. Probably they're not anything. This is Techless. Right? Techless. Like, perfect. We've done it, boys. We've built an army. Techless. Um, uh, Dawn Riders slash the Kangaroo Dudes. Uh, he's actually got a Techless pose. Don't build Lumineth, Rob. No money's worth playing that. Like, this is a long fucking bow. <laughs> Wait, hold on. We just need there to be... So now we've got Wardens. We've got Wardens right there. And the last thing, we hope, we click the next one, and there are Archers available. Come on. Ah, oh, heartbreak. No wait. No wait. We've got Crows. That is a pivot I was not expecting. Just a different race. We thought we were stuck on rabbits, but then we've just pivoted to crows. There's been no reference to crows at any point in this release, and then there are just crows. No reference to crows up until this point, and then this crow infantry, and then there's a demon cow monster. I really, for a moment, thought we were going to be able to get the Lumineth Farmyard Lords. Yes, thank you. Um, but it didn't. It didn't. It didn't pan out that way. No archers available. So, give me a red war game now. Give me a red war game now. A hundred percent. The Lumineth Barmords. That's a sheep. Oh my god! These people are unhinged. Unhinged. Uh, and then there's one more set of designs I've got to find. Hold on. Unhinged. Uh, where are? Yes. Okay. Hold on. This has got audio, so I need to stop it. There we go. Um, okay, here we go. Uh, thanks for being the Honest Wargamer. Oh, no problem, Irrelevant Prime. Thanks for resubscribing and being one of the Honest Wargamers too. The indie design more cow archers, and it's perfect. I agree. Um, the cows had an archer. Who's the sick person who sculpted those? I want the same drugs. Those last designs were done by uh, the Dragon Tapper's Lodge. So, okay. All right, let's, let's take a journey. Let's take a journey emotionally together. Hold on, let me give me give me a moment. Um, so Dragon Tap is large. So one page rules. Okay, okay, one page rules. So here's the cool thing. This is where we go, and we do something fun. So one page rules. Yeah. Uh, and then you play uh, Age of Fantasy. Uh, Age of Fantasy. So this is Age of Sigmar. I'm pretty certain. Yes. And then we want a rule book. Army books. Uh, but we also want those ones. So let's just go look at these. So these are like all your different factions, right? Uh, so uh, like the, yeah, Ossiac Bone Reapers are down there, uh, Orcs, Vampires, like, so you can use all of your models. City Squad, so your Casual and Overlords Army book is there. So it's all one-page rules. Halflings, so that's your Nomad Feastmasters. Uh, 
Ducci's, like, this is all stuff. But then, if you look, hold on, this is all compatible with one page rules. So if you wanted to, hold on, if you wanted to, you could play some of the other armies. So, like, I don't know who's, like, there are wood elves in here, uh, but someone, like, they'll have also made some rules for these really unhinged minis as well. So if you wanted to, you could play like your character and overlord's army, use the one page rules, and then this army. So it's an agnostic rule system where you play your armies against each other. Um, uh, do I follow Matthew's list? I do. Uh, Gangster's Pair of Dice, I do. Uh, those last designs were done by Magic Mushrooms, I agree. Has anyone actually played one page rules? Is it any good? Pfft, no, I haven't. And that's the question. Has anyone else played it? Should I just play it? Should we do like a, a, like, what is the interest? I think there's too much sunk cost. I think that there's a sunk cost fallacy to it. Like, well, not fallacy. It's like, is that even right? There's a sunk cost to it, right? Sunk cost, sunk one page rules is a TTS game? No. Okay, sorry. Just to be really clear, just so you can completely understand what I'm talking about. One page rules, yeah, is a free set of rules for playing. And if we go back one more page, like going, uh, so you can play uh, Grim Dark Future. That's 40k. So here is free rules to play 40k with free rule books for every 40k army. Uh, Firefight is their version of Kill Team. Age of Fantasy is Age of Sigma. Age of Fantasy Skirmish is Kill uh, is Warcry, and then AOF Regiments is Warhammer Fantasy Old Battle. Um, so that's what they are. They're all completely free so we click age of fantasy the rule book is there for free supplements are there for free uh player tools are there for free uh, official faq community translations and stuff uh and then you've got a wiki for strategy guides unit pictures and stuff and then if you want to play any of the armies like an army book beta let's just find one of those let's find one we can all like understand uh so i net deepkin it's quite a limited range uh so you can see the deep sea elves uh so there's the background story and then here's the one page of rules that you need to play Eidneth Deep Kim. Um, get enough people to make the switch. Also, AOS isn't in a bad place, is it? It's not in a bad place. I was able to play Souls Legion without knowing anything about it, just from my mate's advice and anti-rule cards. Excellent. Um, play it, check it out. Massive project Goober Town Hobby is working on. Yes. So uh, they, have a, they have a Patreon as well, uh, one page rules, where they also do 3D sculpts for all these different armies as well. And as has been alluded to in the chat, they are very soon, um, uh, they're doing a lot of like integration with like people like big creators, like Goobertown Hobbies is doing a battle report with Dave from Mini Wargaming uh, and then doing like this big cinematic battle where they're obviously using all their minis. So we're at that stage now where I don't necessarily, like I don't think we're at the stage now where any of these are going to compete directly with Games Workshop. Um, no, they are going to compete directly with Games Workshop, but they're not going to have the success to compete with Games Workshop yet but with huge huge influx of cash because they have make a lot of money from their patreons and being involved with um uh third party creators like people like goober town and dave who generally probably are disenfranchised from games workshop in some ways i'm sure they love games workshop stuff uh then they're going to be able to create some other mini universes that people can take part in um, because, for instance, you can't use any of these minis in a Games Workshop game. But, like Gangster Paradise says, it's about inertia. It's not necessarily that any of these game systems are going to anywhere ever be able to pick up the people that Games Workshop have, because they have a store in almost every city, which means they have kind of like a player base in almost every city. Um, also, 3D printing is generally new, not necessarily got that production capacity that Games Workshop have, so even if everyone wanted to play with this this army or you know one of the one page rules armies or something it necessarily wouldn't be able to all pick it up so that's going to be a problem oh actually let's look at the one page rules trend that's fun wow oh, oh. <laughs> okay yeah so and, and there's a good example of like the difference between one page rules and 40k as a comparison between like their popularity um uh like uh, that looks closer than it is because this is search term orientated over anything else um but yes it's not going to be the games workshop killer no one, nothing's ever going to be a games workshop killer and with new um and with new 
uh, with new like IP and like cinema and TV and stuff, it's going to get even bigger all the time. Um, it's going yeah, to get bigger all the time. But that doesn't mean that there isn't room for other people to play other stuff. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, also, the entire audience for these games tend to be a person very first game, unless they already have friends in the community. Yeah. Uh, you will also notice One Page Rules seems to follow 40k as a trend, so I think it's reliant. Uh, yes, and Gangster Pair of Dice, I, I absolutely agree with that. You should check out the One Page Rules Army Builder website, Blues Game Strips, or Back Scribe, Out of the Water. Do you have a link? That would be really cool to do. Um, uh, we'll finish looking at these STLs and we'll carry on talking about it. Because these STLs are worth talking about. The, the One Page Rules thing is worth talking about. All these things are worth talking about. Uh, simply because, um, uh, hold on. Simply because, like, that is going to be a part of the future. It's not going to be the future. It's going to be a part of the future, right? Uh, and 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 I think it's all going to be interesting. I also think, I think the old world is going to like, the old world is going to explode, as, um, uh, like as a as a thing. It's going to be huge. The Army Forge. Okay, let's create a new army list for 40k. I probably should do it for Age of Sigmar because I know that. Okay, let's do Age of Sigma. Let's do Deep Sea Elves. Points limit. I don't know how much you play to here. 2,000? Generate a starter list. What just happened? Like, sorry? What? just happened generate 1500 points uh, generate a starter list it made a list for me what the fuck that's okay that's insane that's insane that it just wrote the list for me. Uh, and my list is a giant war turtle, a kraken, um, uh, some water elementals, whatever they are, sea worm riders. That's nuts. My list. Okay, oh, this is the list. Oh, no, that's the roster on the side. My list is a scholar, some elf thralls, some water elementals, um, and then some worm sea riders and worm sea riders. That's my 750-point list. Like, it wrote it for me. Um... Uh, so one page rules could be the very thing to get involved. I don't get it. Why will all will be huge? Warhammer Fantasy Battle was a flop. Warhammer Fantasy Battle was a game that had no advertising behind it. Games Workshop specifically did not advertise their own game. Um, I've said this time and time again. What like what like forty k was effectively a flop. Like look at look at forty k like now versus forty k before they got an advertising department. You like like they made. They made like two hundred fifty, like they what made two hundred fifty percent more profit over the past six years. That wasn't because forty k got better. Forty k wasn't like, and I think it is a better game, but like none of these people invested or bought into a game system based off, you know, like with a hundred fifty to two hundred pound buy in. Like no one was like, like no one was like, oh, I'll spend two hundred pounds because it's a good game. They had no idea it was a good game. They just had advertising thrown at them for the first time in modern history for Warhammer stuff. One Fantasy Battle flopped because they never worked on actually trying to sell it. It's the, they're the weirdest company in the world. The weirdest company in the world. And everyone is always like, yeah, it flopped because it like flopped because it wasn't like popular. It flopped because it wasn't supported. It's massively popular. Ma like, I don't think people get it. I don't think people get how many people play Total War. I don't get it. Like, you don't understand. Like, I mean, for the longest time, the only game system they technically had proper adverts for was Lord of the Rings, and the advert was the mo movies. Exactly. Um, uh, it's an interesting listen. Shugo, that's correct. Sometimes I wish it could be like Games Workshop, so stupid, but still be able to make an arse full of money. Like, incredible amounts of money for how fucking rubbish they are. Uh, it also did bring a lot of older players back when they changed 8th edition and promised a non less nonsense game in 7th edition. Uh, you're absolutely true, Angle. That's true, but they didn't bring anywhere near as much as the spike, right? Uh... Put, they'll print money. Do a poll. How many of us are going to get Old World? Okay, yeah, let's do it. Let's do a poll. How many people? And I guess if this is a YouTube vid, then leave some comments if you have listened to this point. Um, uh, one second. 
This will be interesting. Yeah, how many people are going to get Old World? Video producer. One second. Um, oh, it's just a quick way to do this. Right, let's run this poll, baby. Uh, start some trivia. Find yours. Let's see what John. Finish poll. Okay, so new poll. It's going to be how many people are getting Old World? How many people are getting Old World? Hey, everyone listening, uh, please do vote on this uh, because I do want to know like what your thoughts are uh so i'm starting the poll it's gonna have three minutes on it because uh, some people don't know how to find the poll so there we go um uh where has the time gone much like 30k i was against it all now start a group of friends and i have four thousand armies king calligan uh what up baby thanks for resubscribing i feel like oh well might kill aos i don't think you'll kill aos but i think it's gonna be wildly popular like i already play the old world three of the eight versions available there you go. Like, people currently play the dead game. Look at Blood Bowl. Blood Bowl had no support from Games Workshop for, what, 20 years? And it was huge. Absolutely huge. Right? The biggest turnoff for me of what I'm about was the sheer amount of models you needed. I feel like games are moving towards less models rather than more. Ziggy, other game systems are you know, moving towards less models. Not Games Workshop games. They're definitely not moving towards less models, in my personal opinion. Um... Like, it, huge, I think is, like, the answer. It's just, not even us. Like, sure, you currently play Age of Sigmar. You can play, currently play 40k. Why would you pick up Old World? But you play Total War, and you and then Total War sends out a message and be like, you can now buy the armies and play them. Like, genuinely unsure whether to pick it up. Yes, it's going to be big, but from my limited experience, fantasy players, they hugely put me off. You could just be the fancy players, though, right? Um, uh, like, yeah, I meant general tabletop wargaming, not just Warhammer. Yeah, yeah, Warhammer isn't about lower models, right? Um, it says a starter box world was Brett versus Tomb Kings. He heard that on this show. Fifty Shades of Grey. I've been saying that for like three months. Like, it definitely is those things. <laughs> it definitely is those things. It's time to AOS get some good PC games. Y you can't. I'll show you why. Let me show you, let me show you why. I love AOS. You all know I love AOS. No one can say I don't, but I'm going to show you why. Why is it not going to be okay, uh Age of Sigma. This is why Age of Sigma isn't going to get games. I'll start it right here. Okay, here we go. This is it. Oh, hold on. One second. This. This is why. The poster boys are trash. This is why. The poster boys are trash. If they did Cruel Boys. Heck yeah. Lumineth. Yes. Right. There's a bunch of the armies that they could do. That would be the poster boys. But right here is the reason it will never be popular. The army. This is trash. Like absolute like. Channel 5, Power Ranger, Trash, right? You literally pick any other army and it would be wicked, yeah? W not Fire Sayers, probably. But, like, you know that there's a bunch of, like, OCR Bone Reapers. OCR Bone Reapers have got, like, an absolute awesome story. You could do some real dark fantasy with OCR Bone Reapers. You could really, like, like, uh, are they just by the tabletop or boring in the lore? How about, oh, they're boring in the lore. Like the law, right? They just look. Let's right. This is a very subjective opinion. This is not a subjective opinion. This is not like this isn't. This is this is like market research. Like sure, you can like Stormcast. I think some of the current models are good. I've seen some great. One of my favorite armies has got some Stormcast armies in. That's the Amberfall range. Um, it's by like a just a guy that does like Cities of Sigma mixed with Stormcast, and it's all like um. Like, it looks a lot cooler, but this is how Games Workshop pitch it. They looked at this and they thought, yeah, yeah, that looks cool. And that looks like trash. Like, they are never going to sell that, in my opinion. No, no one's, you're not picking that up. Even nerds aren't picking that up. Nerds are like, no, D&D &D looks cooler than this. So much other stuff looks cooler than this. Do you think you're going to get anime weebs? Get this. 
No. Absolutely not. Right? And I hate the Stormcast heads so much. I saw them with Sparta or Greek helmets and they were so much better. Agreed. Right? Stormcast, do they appeal to kids? I don't know. Uh, uh, Stormcast equal every terrible fantasy mobile game trailer ever. Yes. Um, the poster boys have to be a bit boring, right? Like, they have to have wide set appeal and end up Persh or... Like, we can talk about it all day, but Space Marines aren't boring, bro. Like, you know it. Like, sure, like, the the absolutely flat panel Primaris stuff, maybe sometimes. But Space Marines are absolutely hot as shit. Like, the proper Space Marine stuff is so good, right? Uh, uh, my whole Stormcast range have other heads from Poppet Wars to look like Bretonia. Um... Uh, I want orcs with garish over the top shoulder pads. Recreate the vanilla Warcraft trailer with Lumineth. Yeah, Space Marines are definitely boring. Bro, they're not boring, man. Space Marines are not boring. It, like, listen to Horus Heresy books. They're not boring. These guys aren't boring. Do this. Right? Do goblins. Do goblins. You make money. Absolute money. You're making money with a goblin mo movie. A goblin TV series, right? You are printing cash, in my opinion. You've got horror and whimsy, and then you can flick between the two as much as possible. Stormcast have no range. They've got no range. They've got no marketable range. They're dour and fighty, or fighty and dour. Like, old world. Okay, now let's go to old world, right? <laughs> and my friend Simon really likes this thing when I talk about this, right? Okay. Could you find someone, right? Could you find someone who makes Warhammer content that says outspokenly against corpos and like feudalism, the monarchy, pick a fucking lane, yeah? I hate like lords, peerage, feud like feudalism, all of it, right? That's who I am. That's one of the things I talk about all the time. And yet, and yet, I see... A Bretonian bro on a horse with a bit of heraldry, and I'm like, I'm in. You fucking got me, guys. You absolutely got me. You telling me this is this is not as marketable as Age of Sigma? Like this is leagues better, right? Like leagues, in my opinion. Uh, do you think the uh, the poster boys will bring to the Dawnbringer Crusade? Yeah, they definitely could. They definitely could. But that's it. Like, that one image, that sells more than, like, a knight atop, like, a knight talking to the Lady of the Lake. Isn't Empire the Warhammer Fantasy bo uh, Battle Poster Boys? Uh, I think they are. I'm not saying these are. Empires also makes more sense than Stormcast, right? It's triggering your ancestor memories in you as a Brit. It is. Uh, uh, a marine chapter can have an entire book of rules and stuff each. What would a book about Celestial Vindicators have? Like, literally nothing. Shelf loathing. Like, it builds on a cultural mythos. Stormcast isn't grounded in shit. Exactly. Like, uh, uh, I want some grotesque perversion of the Lady of the Lake FEC and some deranged vampire lady. Yeah, Shugo, I'm really excited for whatever they do for that. I think that that'll be... Games Richard are great bait minis. Listen, and I think some of the Stormcast stuff is some of the greatest stuff that they've ever seen. Maybe that's why they're pivoting to dragons, right? Maybe that's why the Stormcast stuff now is pivoting to dragons because they're saying to themselves, we cannot... We cannot pitch this. So maybe dragon riding Stormcast Bros makes a lot more sense. If they quietly squat, uh, sorry, squat, as in get rid of a bunch of the old Stormcast stuff, and then they just go, look, they're a dragon knight army. You're back in the game. You're back in the game. You're dragon riders. You've got like a big dragon lord. You're back in the game. It's better. Um, uh, Thor and Valhalla, Shelf Loathing, they do without any of the cool stuff. I think Stormcast lore is good, they just need to cut it with more forced poster boy nonsense. I, I, I'm not saying the lore isn't good, I quite like the idea that, that they were, like, that each soul is one that was ripped from, like, a dead body. Like, uh, listen, I think you can have some real fun with the lore, but it's not about the lore. No one knows the lore. No one's going to look at the lore. What they're going to do is they're immediately going to look at the first image they see, and that first image is trash, in my opinion. So, uh, okay, let's look at the poll and see how... Uh, oh, no, wait, hold on. View results. Uh, so for the poll, 
60% of the people in the chat are not getting uh, Old World, and 40% are. Okay, seems fair. Um, like, I'm, I'll do a Twitter poll as well. Like, let's do a Twitter poll. So my Twitter, again, should be very Age of Sigmar orientated. So um, who is going to get Old World uh, when it's released? When it's released. Let's do a little tweet about that. And let's see, shall we? Let's pull this bad boy up. Uh, yes. No. I just want yes and no. Simple as. Who, who is going to get Old World? Uh, War, I probably should put Warhammer Fantasy. I sometimes always forget that some people aren't part of the conversation right now. Warhammer Fantasy Old World when it's released. Uh, yes, no. Those are the options on the tweet, right? Um, I, I, I'm not going to... Uh, I just that that'll be enough. Who's gonna get Warhammer Fantasy Old World when it's released? Uh, even if forty percent of the players move to Old World, that's pretty devastating for the game. That's my point. Like that is absolutely my point. Uh, uh, um, like, but also I don't have time for two big game systems. I know, I know you don't. Low fantasy players, it's nature. It's always going to be more relatable. Mr. Paul, but I'm in for Old World. Who doesn't enjoy the feel of a square base? <laughs> I just rebased 120 Night Goblins for AOS. I don't think I'm playing Old World. I don't think you are either. I don't think you are either until something takes your fancy. It's kind of who we are. Like we, we generally all have impulse control issues. Generally. Not all of us. Some of you in there will be like, Rob, I'm literally brilliant. I love you and respect you. Um, anyway, let's look at this final set of minis. We went on a tangent there. Um, the 40% isn't going to move to Old World, though. It's all the people playing... Uh, WAP and 8th, 40% uh, here will probably play both. You're right. Like Also, people who currently don't follow my content are going to be all of the people who play Total War. Like, I don't even know what the numbers are on that. Like, just Total War. Total War. I don't fucking... How do you even... How many... How many... Like, how many... How many copies of Warhammer Total War sold? Total... War 3 sold. So that's the most recent one. 40 million copies. Four zero copies sold. Steam, uh, like, I have no interest in playing Old World because I don't want to play games with Night Days players. <laughs> How many people literally have the time to play two different systems enough to level it to be worth investment? But Rob, a lot of people buy... Don't forget, a lot of people buy into game systems without ever actually ever playing in those game systems, right? 40 milli, right? That's Warhammer Total War 3. That's the new one. That's No, no, that's Warhammer 3. That's the most recent one. So that doesn't allow for Steam sales. I think it's a year old. That doesn't allow for, like, Steam sales. It doesn't allow for, like... I don't think there's even any new DLC available for it. It's 40 million copies. If 10% play of that... 10% of that buy into Old World, that's a player base of 4 million people. Right? That's all I'm going to say. Right? That's what I've been trying to explain to people. People, like, don't get it. I went to Canada, like, it, a few months ago, and there was a 12-person Warhammer Fantasy Battle Edition uh, tournament. 12? Eight of those 12 people were playing because they played Total War, which means they bought an army... Like, wherever they fucking found the models, put them on square bases, build them, paint them, had never played in the tournament before, and then played Warhammer Fantasy Battle, a dead game supported by no one in a tournament. Eight out of the 12 people. It's going to be huge. Like, I didn't say Heresy was going to be huge. I said it was going to be a fucking flop, and it's been a fucking flop, right? But this is going to be huge. Like, I feel so naughty sat watching the show in the Warhammer World Gaming Hall <laughs> with some 3D print bits on my nights and printers go burr on the back of my t-shirt. Herbalista, let's go. Um, yeah, but when they're really not spitting the community since they'll probably just play OS still. Can we track the content creators Warhammer Fantasy Battle release who put out tweets with It Begins and track their progress? Carl, we should start a whole Discord thread with that. Um, uh, I went to Warhammer World on 27th December and the whole row of tables were playing Warhammer Fantasy Battle games. Like, I think, don't think you get it. Like, we'll get there as a group. Like, w I promise. But it's n nonsense. Uh, it's going to be big, but I'd be surprised if 1% of those people get into tabletop. 1% of those people, Elven Painter, is 400,000 people. 
one percent is four hundred thousand people. Like, I I know what the HSC Mar stats are. We have a player base in national internationally of like uh, for tournament gamers of three thousand people. Forty K has a player base internationally, like so world over, of thirty thousand people. Like, like fantasy setting was amazing, but the rules were trash. They, I agree, the rules are trash. I agree. Um, uh, oops, pairings are up. Off to fight some chaos tonight. See you later, Hermanist. Have a great time. Um, I have at least four friends who have played somewhere between 400 and 800 hours of Total War, Warhammer, and would be at least interested in collecting minis. I've tried to get them to AOS, but the models are just different, and the structure is so just so different they can't. Like, start making YouTube shorts for yourself reading Warhammer Fantasy Wiki. Cash in. <laughs> but great idea. <laughs> anyway. Um, right, so the final set of minis we're going to look at. Like, listen, I can be wrong. I've been wrong before. I'll be wrong again in the future. I'm not perfect, right? I'm close to perfect, but I'm not perfect. But that's just my, like, my argument, my treaties, if you will, right, on what I think it's going to look. Um, uh, uh, I'm not only looking forward to the old world, I'm just into rank and flank personal flavor. There you go. And that's okay. Super okay. Um, super okay. Right, let's do this. Mm. So this is the last one we're looking at, and this is going to be some, uh, yeah, these are lizard men, uh, frost heart lizard men. So they're lizard men, but from the cold north. Um, honestly, it makes me depressed that Game Search will likely cover Old World more and more, and they also go in the way of the Underworlds of Warcry. Uh, I don't think so. I think that's why they're having the big bitch fight internally in the company. That's why they, you're only allowed limited range stuff. These are great. These are legit great. Look how good they look for for new lizard men. So we know new lizard men are getting models in the future. Um, uh, AOS has some rules concepts with red flags for some people, and they never try it. Yeah, the double turn, the prior roll in Age of Sigmar puts people off. Look how good that looks. That looks insane. Absolutely insane. That looks great. Love that. These look amazing. These might be the best, the best sculpts we've seen out of the uh, out of the whole month, dude. These look great. Look at all the different weapon options. Got claws and shields. Uh, look at that. And then those dinosaur riders look excellent as well. There's some really good dinosaur riders out there. It's really nice to see this from Artisan Guild because sometimes I feel they're a bit they're a bit iffy, but they have nailed this month. This looks fantastic. Uh, this looks great. Dude, these look great. Very, very good. Good sculpts. Oh, like, there's a shaman? The shaman looks cool. Oh, and Tashok, the, the heroic Lizardman King. Dude. Dude, great stuff. Loads of texture, World of Warcraft vibes. Uh, booba, a booba lizard lady. <laughs> Look at the main one though. That is amazing. Big armor plates. A swole croc. That is good. That is good, man. That is super good. Scatter terrain, the Tyranax skull. Okay. All right, good, good, good range, good release, yeah. Uh, not ruled by a dead frog, controversial. I agree. Um, I mean, set of great minis. I hope you've enjoyed it, plus a few tangents. So if you are listening to this as a YouTube video, like and subscribe, and all those other things, please support the show. Uh, thanks for being great. See you soon. Bye, bye, bye.